Hey guys, this is Bass Clef from Sydney, Australia. Today in the DJ Tech Tools office to tell you a little bit about how I play live and um, how I do what I do. When I'm playing, I'm doing a combination of DJing and a little bit of live performance too. I use three CDJs, the mixer, and uh, I use mostly machine to do any improvisation on top of my DJing, you know, drums, melodies. Finger drumming is something I'm new that I've, uh, for me, that I've just been trying out a little bit and really enjoying. I come from a drumming background, so it's, it's been something really interesting to try and get my head around. As much as there are some similarities with drumming, there are a lot of things that are different too. I've, I've actually come up with a few different things that's made it a little bit easier, so I'll share those with you today. The choice of sounds you're using and where you place them on the pads. As much as I'd like to lay my sounds out the way they normally happen on drum machines like kick, snare, hat, clap or something, Every time I've tried to do that, it just made it really hard to play the things I wanted to play. I do it with a bit of a rocking motion, usually over two to four pads, kind of like this. The thing that really helped me with that was realizing that I could take the clap one and I've got it set up so that it re-triggers the kick whenever you hit it. And a lot of stuff I'm never really hitting two hands at the same time. For me being a drummer, it felt more natural because my hands are constantly moving like, you know, one, one after the other like this and it helped me keep my time. It really does help to practice along to a metronome or a, another record even. I've got a couple of routines that are, the, the basis of them is similar every time. So I'll work on that bit and then I'll do some improvisation and stuff just so that I feel like I've got some ideas in my head and feel comfortable to go and play it. Most of my stuff is in one kit, but when I'm doing stuff when I'm flicking between kits, I usually have one or two key sounds that have a long tail on them. Maybe even a variation on a sound that's in the groove. It gives me a break, a second to come over here and flick to my other kit. These chords make up the main uh, sort of first part of this section. So when I was transitioning to the next bit, I just had another one where it bends down um, and it rings on for a bit longer so I can got time to move over, press the next thing, get straight into it. Often I put that like right on my furthest right corner pad. It's kind of like almost a bit of a transition pad. Some of my kits are based on parts of my own songs. I have a bunch of kits there where I've got them all labeled by key. So no matter what record I'm playing, I can check what key it's in and, and layer things over the top. I've done some where I've taken recordings of the, of the original song and had to like edit them up in Ableton or any, you know, DAW and um, stretch out the sounds. So that if I hit it, it's got some length. The original kind of goes like. And I was able to take those sounds, but they were too cut short. So I lengthened them out so you got the full. There's a lot of length in that kick now and a lot more length in these ones, so I had to add in my own white noise, my own snare drum. Between all that, it kind of lets me then slow it down too, so I could even do... And even change pitch, so... It's, it's fun that way, because then people hear it and they go... They go, oh, I know that song, they go, and they might click, oh, he's doing it live, but then when you kind of remix it like that, then they're like, oh, he's really doing it live. Actually, a lot of people ask me about this. They keep asking me how I get Machine in Time with um, the CDJs, because I tried it with some other MIDI clocking programs and stuff, and I never liked how it sounded. When Machine's following a MIDI clock, it was always a bit jerky, and if I played in a beat and recorded it, it didn't have the same cool groove as when it was not following MIDI clock. I load machine as a plugin in Ableton and I've got these little arrows here set up as uh, nudge forwards and nudge backwards, the tempo. I also got the um, metronome there too. If I haven't got anything programmed, I can listen to the metronome in my headphones, make sure it's in time, turn it off and then I can record in. Another thing I like about Machine is the visual feedback from the pads. I didn't really realize how much people were getting it until I did it one day where I kind of picked it up because it's light and started playing stuff. 
I was playing melodies, they'd really get what I was doing because they'd see it light up. And then if I recorded it in too, then they'd see it chase back. And you see it rolling back. So they start to realize what that's doing there. Then I could go to another sound. And if I recorded that in too, again as well. It all starts to build up. And they start to get each part and go, oh, okay, he's making something. This is all happening live now until he... I mean, that's just like a short example of it. One thing I've been uh, messing around with a little bit lately too is using a bit more side chaining, which is not something that's built in, but if you run it in Ableton like I do, you just you have to use the separate outputs for each sound. You can go through and you can tell it which output to go to. You make an auxiliary channel in your software and have one which is like the key uh, one, like the kick. And I've got a couple of different ones, like um, one is a very heavy side chain, a medium side chain, small and light and so on. And then I choose to send each sound to whichever, how much side chain I want then I don't have to think about it after that or adjust it. And if I play kicks now, in here, like, down the third. Oh, I've got this other effect I should show you too, that I made that I use a lot. So this effect, basically like instant build up. One knob. And you can either press a button to turn it off or just wind it back down. So handy. It's like this massive chain of a million macros I made. I really love Machine because it was everything I liked about an MPC with everything I liked about a computer. Uh, but then I found out about using it live and just absolutely loved it. I could set up a loop and um, record things in. I could finger drum. I love that I can do everything with it. Just looking at it, I don't need to touch the computer, look at the computer. As you notice, I haven't done this whole time. And usually at gigs, I'll just even close it, put it to the side. People will ask me, why do you bring a computer? I'm like, oh, it's only because the cable goes there. And it's great, it's more like I'm just using my own little instrument and my decks, just what I'm used to. And I played live before with, um, completely live years ago, with Ableton and a bunch of things. And I think I made everything a little bit too technical, you know, and um, I was too busy with my head down doing all sorts of things and people couldn't really see what I was doing. You know, it's great to be technical, it's great to, you know, explore new things, but um, it's also good to have at least one part of your show where you interact with the crowd like that and, and give them something visual to it as well. Coming up, I've got a brand new single about to drop. It's called Make Me Forget, out on my label Vacation Records. Um, and you can catch me touring all around the place in the States at the moment, and hopefully everywhere else soon too.